Well, the angel of the Lord in the very midst of the glory of the Lord famously declares in our reading today, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And we, we tend to remember the declaration of great joy, but just before the part leading up to joy and good news for all people, the angel says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And those words are spoken to shepherds watching their flock by night. And way back then when Luke was written, shepherds were a hardened bunch, more akin to hard luck movie western outlaws or motorcycle gang members than the placid nomad farmers that we might imagine today. And as such, shepherds were tough outcasts, not known for displays of fear. Their entanglement in the messiness of living is not so much the shepherds choosing but their lot in life, scrounging for grazing and watering holes on land that's not theirs, for sheep that they likely do not own but tend to for their masters. The shepherds' well-being was little desired or tended to by the Roman culture that oppress and cast out such expendable people. And so when the text tells us that they are watching their flocks by night, you can imagine the shepherds in both real darkness of night and also in the darkness of life, living under the long, long shadow of oppression that Caesar cast over them. In other words, when the angel of the Lord and the glory of the Lord show up, the shepherds are in a dark time, literally and figuratively. Things are so rough for them, we might even say that they are having the world's first blue Christmas. And that gets lost in the holiday shuffle and so many of our visual symbols that seem to mostly focus on the uplifting parts. It's interesting though that if we stop and look, much of the holiday has a dark part to it, surrounding the light. In the spaces between the Christmas lights, there's a lot of darkness. Indeed, without the darkness, the lights pretty much get ignored. I'm not suggesting that theologically dark and negative things are desirable in our lives or anyone else's. I am suggesting that dark, negative things are a big part of life. And that the light of God, or to use the words from our lesson, the glory of the Lord is often noticed better shining in the night. We not only see it best in the dark, but we appreciate it much more than it gives us hope, even joy, to know that it is there. And just as it is for the shepherds in their darkness, it's good news of great joy, as the angel says, for all the people. And that alms is critical. It's not just the shepherds in the nativity stories who are in darkness and who are offered joy in the hope of the light of the good news. There's so many negative habits going on around Jesus' birth story that serve to highlight God's light in the darkness. In the blues, Elizabeth and Zachariah cannot conceive. A divorce looms for Mary and Joseph. Mary is a pregnant out of wedlock teen in a culture hostile to teens and hostile to unmarried women. She can even be criminally liable as an adulteress. There's a, a burdensome tax imposed on the poor. A couple expecting a child is forced by an uncaring government to walk a hundred miles. There's no decent health care or birthing place provided for a poor mom in labor or for her infant. And that infant is a member of an oppressed race. The infant mortality race is, is otherwise high for him. And there's a government that has such a violent and oppressive politics. It causes Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus and to, to seek refuge in another nation. And all of those negative events that I just named from the Nativity story take place in a dark time generally in history when Rome considered its nation and its faith and its people superior to other races, including Jews, 
in occupying Palestine and Rome oppressed those of other races and the poor and anyone who rebelled against them. And Rome propped up vicious local henchmen like Herod and his cronies who did whatever they could to take out Rome's political opponents. Even the Gentile Magi encountered lies and subterfuges and had to go home by a different way to avoid the violence and oppression of Rome's politics. So really the first Christmas in the Gospels can in many respects be understood not just as the first blue Christmas for shepherds, but as a blue, blue Christmas for almost every character in the story, from a peasant infant to even a deranged king. And modern people around the world also fit into the allness of those in darkness. The blueness of Christmas continues for many today with reasons akin to the negative things going on in the nativity story. Divorce, lack of health care, injustice, prejudice, oppression, poverty, racism, refugee families, unfair taxes, corrupt and violent politics. And sadly, many humans, including many of us, have real hurts and threats and messed up things that have happened or are happening. And some of the things are as heavy as those in the nativity stories. Darkness in our life may be in different form than in the nativity stories, but it's no less dark, and it's no less real. And blueness often comes with darkness, and it lingers, and that is natural. And by now, I'm sure it seems odd to have all this darkness and blueness lifted up on Advent Day when we light the candle for joy. But you know what? Tradition put a day of joy on the Advent calendar precisely to remind us that in the dark, the light of Christ shows up. As the coming of Jesus at Christmas approaches, more candles are lit, more light is added. And the candles are in a circular wreath of evergreen branches to symbolize there's no end to God's love who Christ represents on earth for us. Christians. On the third Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the waiting in the dark for the light of God incarnate. And tradition gives us a, a rose-colored candle to light. Rose is the liturgical color for joy. And I like to think that it's reminding us in the winter that spring will come. The rose will bloom. Just hang on. We can get through the dark. The light. In the heart of Jesus' way, the, the very center of his teachings has this great light to it that we are, all of us, loved. Our invocation, Psalm 136, notes that God's love is steadfast and it endures forever. And that means no matter what, in darkness and in light, in sickness and in health, in sinfulness and in goodness, God loves us unshakable. So even if we are unhappy in the difficult negatives of life and the blueness that they bring, our soul can find its way to rejoice. There's reason for great joy for all the people. We can experience joy because in whatever, and I do mean whatever darkness we find ourselves in, the good news is that the bright shining light of God's love is with us always. And there's joy in that. There's joy in that always waiting for us to unwrap. And while that may seem to some like looking through too much of a rose-colored lens in the face of reality of darkness and the blues, it is, please hear me, it is truth, a glorious truth that once uncovered leads us to light in any darkness. And that truth, knowing that we are surrounded by the great light of God's love in the depths of despair and sorrow, fear, and even the shadow of death or the darkness of our own poor choices can lead to joy. Just knowing that light is there in any, any nation. There's always God's love for us, no matter what. And in the reading, the darkness, 
The darkness that the shepherds are in is overwhelmed by God's presence through the angel of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. The dark of the night and the dark of the shepherd's life still exists. The difference is that they are aware that the light of God is in it with them. And for them, that scares them. And not just because it's a spooky sight, but because it's a transformation. And the unknowns of transformative times, especially as trouble looms all around us, puts us on our guard with fear or trouble. And so the angel of the Lord can also be heard to calm that fear of transformation, telling the shepherds and all of us, it's okay. There's good news. They give joy to everyone. Well, once the shepherds calm down and they appreciate the good news, it causes them to go as the angels instructed to Bethlehem and see the thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to them. And they experience Jesus in the dark. The experiences of pure love in his being causes them to spread the good news that the angel revealed, and they are joyful. And then the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And they return to the dark fields, still expendable, still oppressed under Rome, but now they are beloved and they matter to a bigger, much more important force. God, and that made all the difference in sending the blueness and the darkness away. This Advent Sunday is about joy precisely because Jesus' way is about light in the dark, warmth in the winter. It's about the hope and the peace and the promise of love coloring the lens of our blueness rose. And we may not be able to see it through rose color lenses right away. It might even scare us to face the transformation. We too can rest assured and not be afraid. We can be joyful even in the darkness because of the cosmic truth that love is out there. God's light is out there. It's here. It surrounds all people all the time, steadfastly and forever. We are beloved and we matter. The famous 20th century theologian Henry Nouwen noted that being happy is conditioned on external happiness, but that joy is, quote, the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away, in quote. That's the good news that brings great joy from all. To put it another way, more commonly heard at Easter, out of the dark ashes of life, a phoenix rises. That phoenix is love. Last two Sundays we discussed peace and hope, and the very idea of the hope of peace alone can give rise to a joyous response. But when we add into the mix love, we get the full joyful experience that can get us through any darkness. Love is the light that can help us through any night. And we respond with joy. And we're finally able to grasp the truth that we do not need to be afraid that there is good news. And that news is of great joy for us, for sure, but it's also for absolutely everyone else. And next week, our Advent Sunday is named with one word summary of the good news. Love. Bright light for the oppressed outcast shepherds. It's the good news that they are loved. That all are loved. The very same message is what brings light to the darkness of Elizabeth and Zachariah. God, through creation, including each other and others, cares for them and desires their well being. And Mary and Joseph get that same light in all of their dark troubles. God, through creation, including each other and others, cares for them and their baby and desires their well-being. And God speaks to them. And they stay together. An innkeeper finds them some shelter. Magi and shepherd honor Jesus' birth. And the Magi even call, protect him. And then Joseph and Mary flee Palestine and are aided by a Gentile foreign nation 
order they crossed over, seeking and obtaining refuge until the threat is gone. The many troubles in the nativity story symbolize the broad range of troubles students have encountered throughout history, encounter still today. Darkness does not all go away on the first Christmas day, nor does it go away for us. Everyone in the world has darkness in life. We have negative masses at one time or another. Life is hard. There's blueness out there. Everyone experiences it. The nativity story show that was true for the people in the Bible. In the dark, in the blue, the light of God shone for them. And it's also true today that in the dark, in the blue times of our own life, the light of God shines for, for everyone, for all the people. Even if we don't see it right now, the light of love, the glory of God is there waiting for us to look up like the shadows and notice and go experience it and then share the good news. And the beauty stories are meant to point us to that light, to help us look up and see that God's love is steadfast and endures forever for everyone. So do not be afraid. The good news of great joy is for all 